Hi everybody. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the import data command. So import data, you're going to use this for most text files, particularly text files that contain header information or metadata at the top of the file. Um, so import data often is going to require a two-step process in order to read the data into your uh, in the MATLAB. Um, now, by the way, I mentioned, I keep saying that things usually work in certain ways with these. So usually load does this or that. The reason is a few subtle differences in how you run the command change how the input looks. So um, I guess before I really go much further, I'll show you kind of a few different ways of running load that are going to do slightly different things. So we'll do that over on the side here. So we've already talked about this. Load my mat file dot mat. Just like this, the space right here. This is going to take a mat file, read all the variables that are inside that mat file, and put them into the workspace. It's the simplest way to read a math file. You can also write the same command like this. Sorry. Those two commands are going to do the same thing. They're going to read everything out of your math file, put it directly in your workspace. This version of the command, instead of reading all the variables into your workspace, is going to read all read in everything into a structure called A. I'll talk about how to read out of the structure when we get to import data. But here you've got extra work to do in order to now read your data. So that's for map files. For text files, if you're using load, this command is going to take the numbers that are in the text file. This is assuming that it's all that the text file contains one type of data and it's rectangular. It's going to take all the data in that text file. It's going to save it into an array called my text. So whatever the file name is, it'll take that, lop off the dot text, and put everything into that array. If you did not want to do that, you wanted to call it something else, or you call it SE for something else, then it'll work in much the same way. So if you do it like this, my text dot text. Now it's going to save this into an array called SE. And whatever you've named it here. Okay, so you've got two usages of load for a text file, three of them for a mat file that are all going to do the same thing. Oh, not quite. Again, just to kind of reiterate, this is the best way to do the mat file. As far as the text file goes, either way works. Uh, if you want to, if the name of the file is fine with you as the name of your array, then do it that way. If you want to change the name of the array to something else, then do it this way. Okay, that's load. Import data. Okay, so you can use it for a mat file or a text file, import data. 
um, generally I go with load for map files, as I keep saying. But you can import data with map files too. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, okay. So when you import data, I'll do a couple of examples here, a way to do it. At first, I'll show you how it works with map files, but this is not generally a preferred way to do it. So, um, with a map file, you can directly run the command. So, import data, my map file, dot mat. This will do exactly the same thing as load on a mat file. This will read all the variables inside the mat file and uh, save them into your workspace. Likewise, with this mat file, if you do this, now, it does the same thing as it would have done if you did if you said uh, a equals load map file. So import data and load are interchangeable for map files. But keep it simple. Just remember this, when you have a map file, this is the easiest way to get data into MATLAB. So if you're having trouble remembering what command to use for a map file, if it's a map file, keep it simple. Type as little as possible. So the uh, smallest amount of typing that you can do to load a map file looks like this in the rainbow box here. Load map, my map file dot mat. Minimal typing. Easiest way to get your map file open. If you find yourself typing more, you're probably making your life more difficult. Okay. So again, map files are not the, uh, are not where import data is powerful. Import data has its most power dealing with ASCII text files. Now, if you have a text file that you could have opened with load, so one of these commands would have worked just fine for your text file, then import data and load are interchangeable. However, if you have a text file that has a mixture of text information and numbers, then you need import data. And it's going to look like this. Oh, by the way, I should mention, if you're using either of these commands and starting it with a variable and a set operator, you're going to want to suppress your output on all of them because oftentimes a data file contains a lot of data. And when you, when you use a set operator, MATLAB is automatically going to want to print to the screen everything that is just read out of the file or just everything that is getting placed in the variable with that set operator. So when you're reading a data file, probably there's a lot of numbers. So if you don't suppress the output, it's going to throw all those numbers up on the screen. And that could be problematic because maybe you don't want to see 400,000 data point values. You just want to re read them in and manipulate them, but you don't actually want to look at the numbers because at least for me, if I see more than 10 numbers all at once, I stop caring really quick what those numbers are because my brain just doesn't want to process them. I guess it's partly from writing code for the last 15 years. But where I just trained my brain that, oh, I don't have to look at that. But in any case, anytime you have a set operator, you probably want to suppress the output. I typically don't write the semicolon on the board just because it makes things messy. But for this, I will because it's important. OK. So this is your import data command. What this is going to do, it 
it's going to save everything into a, a structure called B. You still have not accessed your data once you've done this. All you've done so far is you've uh, retrieved the file and opened it, but we haven't gotten anything out of it yet. I like to look at this kind of as an analogy um, with text files. Uh, when you order something online and it gets delivered to your house, the first thing you do when it gets delivered is you open your door, pick up the box off the porch and bring it inside and open up the box. But once you've done that, you know, let's say let's say you ordered a Blu-ray of the latest Star Wars movie. So that's what I'm going to do. That's not true. I already did that as soon as it came out. Um, you ordered a Blu-ray on Amazon of the latest Star Wars movie. The uh, Blu-ray arrives. You bring it in. You open the box, but you still don't have the Blu-ray in your hands. It's still in the box. That's what import data is. It's bringing in the box, opening it, but not getting anything out yet. Now, inside that box, your Blu-ray is going to be in there. You're probably also going to have a bunch of the, those uh, you know, blow-up plastic uh, cushion pad things that keep it from rattling around in shipment. And possibly there's also going to be a slip of paper in there with a packing list that says, you know, what, what's in the box or what's supposed to be in the box. So you've got a bunch of stuff in there in addition to your Blu-ray. All you really care about is your Blu-ray. So I know most of you probably reach into the box, grab the Blu-ray, and wander off into the living room and just leave the box on the table with all the other stuff in it. So we need to do that too in MATLAB. So we have our text file. That's our box. We've imported data. That means we brought it in the house and opened it. But now we need to get the data out of the box. Now there's a few. Now when you use import data on a text file like this, there's going to be a few things in that box, in that structure. There's going to be the data. That's what you want out of there. But there's also going to be something called text data and something called column headers. So structure B contains all these things. So these are all variables that are contained inside the structure B. Um, text data and column headers are basically the packing material. Um, the reality is those are actually the values and the column headers and everything. But these are things that we aren't terribly interested in. Those are information that's there for us to read. But what we really want out of here is the data. So to extract the data, we're going to run another command here. So. To extract the data, let's say we're going to call it uh, discharge. We have river flow data. So that's the second command. This is the one that actually pulls the Blu-ray out of the box. So what this will do is this is going to create our array called discharge. So it's a two-step process in order to read our data out of that text file. This B here, that's the same. That's this variable here. So whatever you name it when you do the import data, that's what goes here with b.data. So whatever you end up calling that. OK, that's how you read files with import data.